Hi, my name is Brother Ismail, a former Christian who embraced Islam by the grace of Almighty God, Allah the Most High. Welcome back to my video series entitled 110% Proof Jesus is Not God, discussing the theological problem of Mark chapter 13 verse 32. And my contention is, as a Muslim of course, that this verse proves Jesus is not God. The verse goes as follows, quote, Jesus said, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, meaning Jesus, but only the Father, meaning God. This is a quote from the New International Version, Mark chapter 13, verse 32. So basically, my contention is, as I said, Jesus is not God because in this verse, he said he did not have knowledge of his second coming, when it would be, but God knows all things. In the second Christian explanation, the issue was Jesus knowing the time of his second coming, but choosing not to know the time due to a voluntary limitation of his divine attribute of knowledge, which he put upon himself in the incarnation. However, explanation number four is slightly different and more primitive. It is said that Jesus as God knew the time of his return, but as man he did not know. Basically, Jesus spoke from his human nature, or his human knowledge, not from his divine knowledge. This is the most common explanation that I get from Christians, especially the laymen amongst them, in reply to the problem of Mark chapter 13, verse 32. It is the common, simplistic explanation you hear from Christians who really don't know much about their faith and their beliefs. They simply claim that Jesus fully knew as God, but did not know as man. In other words, they divide the person of Jesus into two natures, one God and the other human. To prove that Jesus knew all things, they quote verses like John chapter 2, verse 24, which says, quote, But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. End quote. This is a quote from the New King James Version of the Bible. So it was Jesus the man who did not know the hour, not Jesus the God. Here is my refutation of this Christian explanation. I say that because this Christian claim is simplistic, let me also refute it simplistically with a question. Is the context of Mark chapter 13 verse 32 talking about mundane human worldly knowledge? Or is it talking about spiritual knowledge, divine revelation, or prophetic, futuristic knowledge that only God knows and only God can reveal? Is the knowledge of the time of Jesus' second coming a type of knowledge that we would expect an average human to know the details of? Or is it something that we would only assume God knows or that God reveals to a prophet? An example of human mundane knowledge, uh, worldly knowledge, would be something like asking Jesus uh, in the market, how much is that sack of rice over there? An example of spiritual knowledge would be to ask Jesus, when will the end of time occur? Or, when will the time of your second coming be? Look, my point to any Christian who uses this kind of argument uh, is that the context of Mark chapter 13 verse 32 is talking about divine spiritual knowledge, something that Jesus would and should know if indeed he was fully God, or would and should know as a man with the Spirit of God fully dwelling inside his incarnate body. The context of this verse, Mark chapter 13 verse 32, is clearly not about worldly knowledge. So the fact that Jesus said that he did not have that spiritual knowledge of the future event of his second coming into the world to punish the wicked sinners means that Jesus was speaking from his alleged divine side or divine nature, not from his human side and human nature. And notice that Jesus did not say that I know the time of my return as God, but as man I do not know. He did not make such a distinction. Instead he made a general statement and said that simply he did not know. I know this sounds ridiculous and simplistic, but the Christian claim in response to the theological problem of Mark chapter 13 verse 32 
is itself very, very ridiculous, and it forces me to sound ridiculous in refuting it. It's simple, folks. There is no way around this issue. Jesus did not know the time of his return because he is not God. The fact that the disciples had asked Jesus about the time does not mean they believed he was God. Rather, it was because they believed Jesus was a human prophet who received revelations from God, like any other prophet. For proof Jesus was believed to be a prophet, see Mar uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 5, Matthew ch chapter 21, verse 11, Matthew 21, 46, Luke 24, 19, John 4, 19, John 6, 14, and John 7, 40. Indeed, Jesus described himself as a prophet in Luke chapter 13, verse 33, and Matthew chapter 13, verse 57. And this is confirmed in the Word of God, the Quran, in chapter 19, verse 30, chapter 61, verse 6, and chapter 5, verse 75. Furthermore, the more educated Christians themselves refute this Christian explanation because it leads to what most Christians call an unorthodox separation of Jesus' divinity and humanity, which leads to what is called the Nestorian heresy. It also makes us Muslims ask silly questions. For example, when Jesus said he did not know the time of his return, was he speaking from his human nature or divine nature? If it was his human nature, why didn't his divine nature kick in and overrule his human nature and tell the disciples the time of his return? Or was his human nature stronger than his divine nature so that the humanity, humanity prevented the divinity from speaking out? We can ask many more ridiculous questions like this, but I think you can see my point. I can agree with Christians when they say Jesus as a man was limited. But shouldn't Trinitarian Christians believe that Mark chapter 13 verse 32 is not talking about Jesus the man? I mean, according to Christian doctrine, it clearly refers to Jesus as the Son. And as we know from Christian doctrine, the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Son, Jesus, who is called the Son of God, is also fully God. And notice that in this verse, Mark chapter 13 verse 32, Jesus is referred to as the Son, and that is followed by the mention of God as the Father. So the words Son and Father are used here together in the same context, which, which implies Jesus is being referred to here as the Son of God, the divine Jesus, not Jesus, the Son of Man, the human Jesus. So how can you Christians come up with the argument that Jesus is limited as a man? That's irrelevant to the meaning of Mark chapter 13, verse 32 which, according to your own Christian theology, speaks of Jesus as the second person in the Trinity. Again, I don't want to get off topic here, but let me ask this question. Is the Holy Spirit ignorant also? Mark chapter 13, 32 clearly says that the Father alone knows the time of Jesus' return. The Holy Spirit and the Father are said to be two divine persons in the triune Godhead, according to Trinitarian belief. So, if the Father alone knows, this implies the Holy Spirit is also ignorant. So here, the Christians are in a major dilemma. Not only is their God Jesus ignorant, but their God the Holy Spirit is also ignorant. Only the Father knows. So anyway, let's stay on topic because I don't want to talk about the Trinity. Again, that's a different issue altogether. Jesus did not say, quote, It is not my role to proclaim or reveal the time, end quote. But he claimed not to know the time. So it's not that he can't reveal the time, it's just that he does not have that knowledge of the time in the first place. Did Jesus somehow not have access to his own knowledge, as if the knowledge was hidden away in the back of his mind, whether it was his human mind or a divine mind? What nonsense! Also, the Bible is clear from Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, that Jesus did not possess all spiritual knowledge, all divine knowledge. The passage says, quote, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him, end quote. This verse is talking about divine revelation from God. In other words, spiritual knowledge. Christians believe that Jesus was God incarnate. 
which basically means that Jesus was fully human, but the spirit that dwelt inside him was fully the spirit of God himself. So if Jesus did not possess the divine knowledge or divine revelation, which of course is spiritual knowledge, this means that the spirit of Jesus was not the spirit of God. In other words, Jesus was not God because he lacked spiritual knowledge, but the spirit of God does not lack spiritual knowledge. It knows all things. Also, Jesus had to receive that spiritual knowledge or revelation from God because Jesus did not possess it in the first place. Only God did. The giver is greater than the receiver, and the one who has something gives it to the one who does not possess it. The Reformation Study Bible, which was edited by the theologian R.C. Sproul, contains thousands, thousands of study notes compiled from over 50 distinguished biblical scholars. Commenting on Mark chapter 13, verse 32, it says, quote, Nor the Son. Jesus was conscious of his unique relationship to the Father as the eternal Son. Here you go, basically, Mark 13, 32 is referring to Jesus as the Son of God, the eternal Son. Yet there was a limitation of his knowledge during his incarnation. What the Father had not revealed to him about the future, he did not know." End quote. So, in summary, Mark chapter 13, 32 is an issue of spiritual knowledge. In other words, the second coming of Jesus. Jesus did not possess that spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge, therefore he cannot be God, because the Spirit of God knows all things, it's not lacking in any knowledge. The verse is not talking about Jesus' human limitations, because the question of Jesus' second coming into the world to punish the wicked sinners is an issue of spiritual knowledge, not worldly, mundane human knowledge. So I think my point is clear here. Uh, this proves that Jesus is not God, and the fourth Christian explanation is thus refuted and false. I look forward to seeing you next time in part five of the series, refuting the next Christian explanation, dealing with Mark 13.32. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum.